Hi, I'm Olivia and I'm the Witch of Wonderless. I've actually already had two cups of coffee today and now I'm drinking black tea. So I'm just, I'm wired. I'm like ready to take on Satan himself. No. All right, we need to calm down. It's it's just a it's just a epic cue today. That's all it is. I don't need to. There's no reason to fight Satan. Okay, today I'm drinking Madagascar Vanilla by Gold Moon Tea. I got it for Christmas. It's delicious. Highly recommend. <sighs> all right. So today we are doing a FAQ, a frequently asked questions video. I get a lot of questions, both from non-practitioners and from beginner witches, even from people who have been practicing forever because everybody practices different, so obviously I get questions. So I'm going to start off with just kind of beginner questions. A lot of the questions are coming from my beginner intro into your craft, beginning into your craft video. I get a lot of questions from there that I probably didn't answer or didn't answer clearly enough and I get a lot of questions on the moon water video as well. So I'm going to start with those and then we'll go more into the FAQs of things that are more personal to me. So to start this off, a lot of the questions is where do I start? And I did answer this in my beginning in your craft video. I know what I know what I named it. <laughs> I did answer this, but in bullet points super quick anywhere literally anywhere pick a topic that interests you whether it be crystals herbs spirits deities mythology lore fae pick absolutely anything and just start from there because you'll just go down the rabbit hole another thing i highly suggest if you don't know where to start is to make sure to cross reference everything i know that there's a lot a lot a lot of knowledge out there or a lot of just stuff and you have access to that with the internet. So watch a lot of different YouTubers, read a bunch of different books, Google, like Google, like your life depends on it. Go to Barnes and Noble and just, and just browse, spend a whole day there if you want to. Go to the library and see what they have and maybe even check some things out. Just start anywhere. You can start with literally anything and it'll just unravel from there, I promise. My other suggestion if you don't know where to start is take notes. Take notes on everything. If you're doing if you're doing any kind of divination, take notes. If you're doing any kind of spell work yet, take notes. If you're learning something and that really resonates with you, take notes on it. And the last bullet point on this one is just practice. That's why it's called practice. You, there's no better way to get better or to evolve in your craft than to practice. So the next one goes into, okay, now I have all this information, now what? <laughs> How do I start casting? What do I go about this? The biggest thing is it's all about intent. I know that you just hear this and you read this everywhere and it's everywhere and you're just like, I, I get it, intent, whatever. But it's true, it's all about intent. You don't need to run out and buy any fancy tools. You don't need to buy anything. You can literally meditate on something and manifest that. You can write it down. And that's a great, great, great way to start spell casting is just writing things down and writing things down as if they already happened and keeping them, or you can burn them, or you can just hold them in your pocket or bury them in a potted plant. You don't need tools. It's just about your intent. Third one is, I do want to use tools, so what can I use? What kind of tools should I use or can I use if I'm just beginning? I get a lot of people who are practicing in secret and or beginning, and a lot of people are asking me, where should I get my herbs? Where should I get my crystals? Where should I get my ritual this and that or my altar cloth it's a really loud plane it's a helicopter just kidding my answer to you is use what you have i know i sound like a broken record but when you're first starting out you don't need to run out and buy these beautiful multicolored ritual knives or crystals that everybody's saying you need on the internet i don't know you don't need any of those things where should you get your herbs go to your kitchen. If you don't have any dried herbs in your kitchen, go to the grocery store. When you're first starting out, please just cut out all of the complex things that everybody's trying to tell you what should and shouldn't be about your personal craft and just start with basic stuff. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. For crystals, I would suggest either online or check out metaphysical stores, 
spiritual stores, anything like that that's near you. If you don't have things like that, I would probably suggest purchasing from smaller businesses online. So I know that there's a lot of people on Etsy that sell crystals, so you can check those out too and see if that vibes with you. Am I too young to be practicing? I get this one a lot. Are you too young to go to church? Being young is kind of all about not really knowing what you are or what you believe in. And that's not a bad thing. I really don't believe that's a bad thing. And I mean, I'm still really young myself. I'm still figuring things out. I have a lot to learn. There's a lot of women who are mothers who are witches and they pass down the craft to their children. And I just think that you just need to make sure that you are doing your research, that you are gathering information before just hopping into something. I don't think that you should jump into doing spell work when you have no idea what you're doing. Knowledge is power. I'm gonna say that a thousand times and a thousand times more. Knowledge is power. So the more you know, the better you're gonna be equipped for not only your practice, but life. If you want to start doing any kind of spell casting and you are very young, I would start with doing things like cleansings, protections, or wars. You can find those all over the internet, you can find those in books, and I'm planning on doing videos in the future, so hold tight. If you want to start spell casting like right now, but you don't really know where to start, you're kind of uncomfortable with just hopping into any spell work, which I don't blame you. And I don't think that you should be hopping into spell work that you're just like, yes, this is, yeah, I'm just gonna do this and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I would suggest starting with things like cleansing, things like grounding, protection, wards, and journaling. You can even do divination, it, even if you're practicing in secret and you're not allowed to have tarot cards. You can use things like playing cards, playing music on shuffle, and hearing what song pops up and if that means anything to you. Can men be witches? Yes. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't be a witch. And if you don't like calling yourself a witch, that's fine. Don't call yourself a witch. I would be careful with what you call yourself though, just because I, if you call yourself something other than a witch, I would do some research. Y'all are gonna hate, you're gonna be like, I get it, research. But knowledge is power, okay? Like calm down. <laughs> just do the research behind the term that you want to identify with because I just wanna make sure that you understand where that's coming from, the history behind that and what that term actually means. Will you cast a spell for me? No, sorry. <laughs> My practice is purely personal. I don't offer spell work for the public. I don't offer spell work for money. If that's something that you truly, truly want and you want to pay a practitioner to do spell work for you, again, what do you think I'm gonna say? <laughs> research them. My biggest red flag is when practitioners reach out to other people and are saying, if you need spell work, come to me. If you need spell work, here's my information, blah, blah, blah. If you see that, I'm going to say probably don't go to them because that just sounds like they're going to want the money and you have no idea what kind of actual practice that person does. I would do research on that practitioner. I would see if they have any other past things. I would reach out to them and just kind of gauge their vibe. Please, please, please be careful if you're paying somebody to do practitioner work for you, if you're paying somebody to do spell work for you, because if they don't know what they're doing, they can mess some stuff up, okay? So just keep that in mind. What are some good books you recommend for witchcraft? You guys are gonna hate me after this video. <laughs> so two of my favorite books that I reference a lot, 5,000 Spells by Judica Isles and The Encyclopedia of Witchcraft by Judica Isles. They're these giant, giant books and it comes from a very outside perspective and The Thousand Spells is just a bunch of folk magic, ancient spells. I think some of it is ritual magic. I haven't, there's so many in there that I, I can't really tell you for sure. But those two I really enjoy. As for other books, I don't like recommending books because again, every person practices so differently and believes in things that are so different from me that a book that might have helped me might not help you. A lot of witchcraft books are based in Wicca and I'm not Wiccan. So I had to take a lot of what they were saying with a grain of salt because that was their religion and I don't, I don't follow that religion. I'm not sorry for this. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Picking a topic and researching that. In both the spirituality form and the mundane form. The mythology or other religions, especially religions that you disagree with because sometimes you might find something very interesting. Check out herbs, both in the magical form 
and in field guides and in gardening sections. So just across the board, learn everything on both the mundane side and the spiritual side. And that'll help you a lot, I promise. My neighbors are outside right now and I feel like they can hear everything I'm saying and I'm pretty sure that's why they avoid me. <laughs> Is witchcraft evil? No, not good or bad. I like to use the metaphor, magic is like a hammer. You can either build a wonderful house with it, or you can beat somebody over the head with it. It just matters who you give that hammer to. How can I join a coven? This one is a little difficult because I found mine out of luck, and it seems that a lot of other people have found theirs out of luck as well. My personal coven is a non-religious coven, so it's a bunch of people who practice and believe a bunch of different things, and we all kind of are solo practitioners that all group together every month. Whereas some people really enjoy the ritualistic magic and rituals of an actual religious coven. So that kind of falls to what you want out of a coven. If you're really, really looking for a coven, I would go to rituals local in your area if your area offers things like that. So look up things like meetup.com or just kind of just Google pagan rituals in my area and check that out. Socialize in the pagan community, join groups in Facebook. I'm told that there's a lot of groups in Amino and we actually have a Wanderlust Coven Reddit page. So, and there's a lot of other Reddit pages for tarot, witchcraft, pagans. So check those out too. If you're too young to go to these rituals by yourself, unfortunately you might just have to wait until you have that freedom to either leave the house or move out on your own. But again, this just gives you time to grow and understand what you believe personally. What kind of water should I use for my moon water? It doesn't matter, honestly. You can use what other kind of water you like. You can even charge tea under the moon if you so feel the need to. Personally, I like to ingest my moon water, so I will use filtered water and cover it when I charge it under the moon. But if you want to use certain things like spring water, rain water, melted snow, or tap water, all of those work just fine, but if your tap water or river water that you're using isn't safe to ingest or you're not sure if it's safe to ingest, I would just be safe and use filtered water anyway. Are you Wiccan? No, I'm not personally Wiccan, and I know that Wicca and witchcraft get lumped together a lot. I don't know a lot about Wicca, but I know, but what I'm told is that not all Wiccans are witches, and I know for a fact that not all witches are Wiccan. If you're looking for more things on Wicca, specifically the religion, then I would suggest Harmony Nice, not just because she's a gorgeous person and I have Loki a crush on her. Don't you go telling people. Don't tell Alex. <laughs> Is witchcraft right for me? I get this question a lot and I don't know. I don't know you as well as you know yourself. I, spirituality, is such a personal thing and you don't have to call it witchcraft you don't have to call it woo woo you know you can call it whatever you want you can say that you're superstitious you can say that you're spiritual you can say that you are magically inclined i i don't it doesn't matter just make sure that you feel comfortable with it because it's all about enriching your life it's all about making your life better it's not about the people around you because when you're happy with yourself and you're happy with your life when you're happy with yourself and you're happy with your life, the people around you, you're already enriching their lives with your higher vibration and your smiles and your happiness. So honestly, all of it's gonna come down to what you believe and what feels best for you. Have you had spells work? I love this question because, man, would I look stupid sitting here and being like, witchcraft, and then telling you guys, no, I don't, I don't think any of this worked for me. I've been doing this seven years and I've never seen anything come out of it. Yes, I've had spells work for me many times. Have you ever astral traveled? No, I have not. Not that I know of, but I feel, I feel like you would know if you have, but I, I have not. Have you ever experienced an evil spirit? Not that I can recall. I've definitely experienced some noisy spirits, but never an evil spirit. And most of the time, if you just politely tell them to go away, they will. I personally have never dealt with an evil spirit, and I'm grateful for that. I've got a lot of protection around me. Do you speak to the dead? Me? No, not personally. I have covenants that do, I do not. 
Have you ever hexed or cursed someone? No. Thank the spirits, I have not had to do that yet. What is your advice for beginner witches? Always trust your gut. Never stop learning. Don't do things you don't know anything about. Simplicity is key. Tools are just tools. The powerhouse is you. Do not label yourself if you don't want to. And being spiritual or a witch doesn't define you as a person. This one I get a lot. What kind of tarot deck do you use? I use three different tarot decks. All of them I love dearly and all of them give me very different personalities. <laughs> The most common one that everybody wants to know about is my Rosa Ophidia tarot deck from Leela and Olive. They have beautiful art, so if you ever get the chance, please do go check it out. I am definitely planning on purchasing some of the Oracle decks as well. I will leave those links in the description below. I also use the Wild Unknown deck gifted to me by my wonderful boyfriend Alex, and I just recently acquired the Rider Weight deck, which I've actually been wanting for ever by my wonderful roommate Colleen so thank you for that thank you thank you Colleen you're the best both of those will also be linked in the description below I also get questions on the mugs that I use this particular mug I got in San Francisco if if I can find out where to get this mug I will link that in the description below and the last one that I get questions on a lot is the that you'll see in the very beginning of my over tea videos with the skull and the flowers painted and my nails my nails are from Walgreens they were eight dollars and they were stick-ons so if you are interested in that go for it <laughs> and that mug I actually painted on a date with Alex so that one not online but thank you for asking and thank you for all of the very wonderful compliments that I get on that because I have a few different things before this video ends to tell you guys. I am working on some surprises for you. I am so excited to share this with you, but I can't yet. I'm planning on releasing these things for you guys in June, so you don't have to wait much longer. I'm really, really excited because, because some of these things I'm able to give away for free, and I'm so excited to do that, and then other things I'm going to give to you guys that I've created myself, and you can help support this channel by purchasing them later. So, <sighs> I'm just really excited. I'm, I'm going to say that a thousand times. I'm so excited. All right, so that is that. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that answered a few of your questions. Well, other than that, I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I'll see you next Wednesday. If you want to join the Wonderlust Coven, go ahead and hit subscribe, and you can see my new videos that I'm trying to post every Wednesday. And you can join the Wonderlust Coven in the subreddit. Talk to everybody who's joined there that's part of the Wonderlust Coven. They're all super nice. They all have amazing art. And you can answer some questions from people who are just starting, people who are practicing in secret, and people who have been practicing for so long. <laughs> On top of that, go ahead and hashtag any of your practice or anything that's witchy to you under hashtag Wonderlust Coven. I'm on Instagram at the Witch of Wonderlust. And other than that, best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.